January 7th, Showtime Pay-Per-View, Washington, D.C. Your co-main event, though, you're talking about the future of the welterweight division. We're probably talking about the future of the entire sport. It's unbeaten. Jerron, Boots, Ennis. It's the interim, I believe, IBF welterweight title, but it's a step-up opportunity on your journey, Jerron, when you take on Karen Chikadzian. Uh, Great to chat with you, first of all. We love you here on Morning Combat. You've been making a lot of noise. I got to ask you, how hard is it to be patient when you want all the smoke tomorrow? Right now, if they got it, you want it all, but you got to right. climb that ladder and, and, and slither a bit. How has this process been for you? Uh, I mean, it's been, it been a, you know, a long process, but it's, you know, it's great. You know, uh, in the meantime, you know, I'm, you know, I'm getting better and better each and every day. So, you know, that's all, you know, I'm not too worried about anything. <laughs> Just getting better. You know, Just young. I, Talented, how, living your living the dream, man. Right. Yeah, that's how I stay focused. You know, I'm always in the gym. You know, I ain't, I don't worry about this and that. You know, I stay stay like then. I'm always worrying about better on myself. You know, that's it. All right, you got this this step forward on your journey opportunity, but is it a step up opponent wise? When you look at what Chikadzian brings to the table, he's got a good record, twenty one and one. Mm. But there's levels to this. What level do you believe he's on? And, and what type of challenge is he heading into this one? Uh, I'm not too sure uh, about, you know, his style or anything. You know, I let my team do stuff like that. Uh, but um, I'm just listening to what my dad got me doing in the gym, you know, uh, in certain shots and, and moving a certain way. And, you know, listen to my dad is key. But um, I, don't, I, know, I know he's not – I know he's not, you know uh, – not a bad fighter you know you got the, the european style he's from 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 over there so from the ukraine so i know he got a good background so you know i'm looking to show me being dominant and put on a beautiful show and you know right. getting a knock and like you know as chess moves go i mean look people aren't lining up to fight you that that's one thing we do know is it just keep climbing mandatories and eventually you know they can't avoid you eventually i mean you're on the doorstep now already but seemingly if you get a victory here january 7th the champs gotta fight you and that right now is errol spence right i feel like i feel like uh this ibf and run is putting me right in place is uh definitely making me you know uh well putting me where i want to be you know uh and that's being in line for the world title next so i gotta handle business on january 7th but then it's you know me me and you know errol spence or or whoever, you know. The division, the sport in general, we all wanted Crawford Spence to happen for, for clarity, for entertainment, for history, legacy, all that. That fight falling apart, how much did that impact what you were hoping to do to close this year and entering into 2023? Uh, that fight definitely impacted us, you know, uh, well, me and me a lot because uh, I was originally supposed to fight in, like, November, and then D got pushed back to December. Then we got another call about the preview, fighting on preview in January. So I was like, why not? What's what's three, two or three more weeks, you know? So, and it's a bigger opportunity, better opportunity, fighting on preview, you know, fighting on the undercard with Tank, you know, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of, you know, celebrities and, you know, everything. Just, I feel like this, this is everything falling right in place for me right now. And uh, it's like the perfect thing, you know, for me to fight on right now. Did you have an opinion? Did you have a dog in the fight either way in the Spence Crawford uh, battle, which only took place seemingly over social media, not in a, you know, not at the negotiation table, not inside the ring. Uh, but did you put blame either way? Do you care? Where do you stand on that? I mean, I, honestly, I really don't care because I don't really know what's going on. We don't we don't really know what's going on in the background, behind the scenes between them two. You know, it could be a money issue. It could be, you know, uh, it could be anything, you know. So I don't, I don't know what's going on, but hopefully they do fight. If not, that's better for me because I get to fight either one of them. So it don't matter to me. All right. Let me ask you what happens first. Spence fights Crawford or you fight either Spence or Crawford? It was up to me. I fight both of them. Me fighting Spence and me fighting Crawford. Same night. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I love about you. You're willing. You're ready. You want to show. Uh, do you personally believe that either one is a better style matchup for you? Uh uh, I mean, we we won't know until until fight night, you know. And I, like, but like I always say before, the better my competition is, the better I'm gonna be. The smarter I'm gonna be, the sharper I'm gonna be. So I feel like it's gonna be easier for me, 
you know, uh, the, the better, the higher level the competition is. Well, let's be honest here, Boots. Um, for the level of competition you've been able to get in the ring with you, you've, I mean, you've dunked on him. It's been spectacular. It's been incredible to see. I'm sure you'd love to showcase everything you got in there, but I mean, have you felt like you've been tested, you know, anywhere near enough to show how great you really are? I mean, how much have we actually seen of the full Boots Ennis experience? And I'm, you know, I'm kissing your ass. I'm showing you a lot of respect, but some of that dog inside of you only is going to come out when it has to. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I only showed about oh, 25, 30%. I feel like I really hadn't, hadn't had to go into my bag yet, you know. Uh, but, um, I mean, maybe one day we'll see. Maybe not. Maybe I'm going to continue to keep knocking these guys out early. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Look, when we see you fight, we get excited because you jump through the screen. There's a there's something alive there going on that that's, you know, extraordinary. How would you describe, though, what separates you from the other great welterweights in the world today? Uh, what separate me, separates me from, you know, all the other rest, the rest of the welterweights is um, charismatic, you know, uh, entertaining, you know, speed, power, accuracy, fight both sides, inside, out. I do it all. Like I just, I just, and I have fun when I'm in the ring, and that's the difference between me and these other guys. I don't know if they having fun or not, but when I'm in there, I ha I'm having fun, I'm smiling, and it's like it's like I'm at home. It's like a happy place when I when I step into that ring under them lights. And I just be wanting to shine and and look great doing it. And, you know, I always bring a knockout home to the fans. So that's that's the difference between me. You know, I just I always want to look good. You know, put on a beautiful show for the fans. You know, I always you know I give a knockout too. Well, that, that's sometimes the problem is you're not putting in a ton of rounds. You blow away Custio Clayton in May of this year in two rounds. Last year against Thomas DeLorme, we're like, is this going to be a challenge or not? Wow, one round, you pieced through him right there. So, I mean, do you wish these go a little bit longer? Are, are you hoping to get an extra work? Do you not need it? Where, 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 you know, is it way, hey, whatever. That, that's what comes with it. I mean, y'all know my y'all know my slogan. I'm in and out like a robbery, and we don't get paid for overtime, so... <laughs> If I catch you early, I'm getting you out of there early. I'm not playing around with you or anything. So, yeah. Give me the backstory on the Boots nickname because I don't think I've even heard that myself yet. Uh, my my nick my original nickname was supposed to be Boops B O O P S. My my mom gave that to me, and when I was running around playing, you know, in the gym as a little kid, everybody thought my dad was saying Boots like the shoes, and we just kept it. And it just stuck with me ever since. There it is. There it is. 25 years old on top of your game. Going to fight for that interim IBF title come January 7th. Uh, Tank Gervonta Tank Davis atop that card. Hector Luis Garcia, his his opponent, all part of what we all hope is a build toward Tank uh, taking on Ryan Garcia in April. But, uh, you know, what does it mean to you to share a card with, with, a, with a guy who, you know, wouldn't be out of line to say is among the 10 best fighters in the world at the moment? Uh, it's great, you know, to be sharing the card with, you know, with Tank and things like that. You know, uh, I know he's going to bring the fans out. He's going to be explosive on fight night. You know, uh, maybe, maybe we're going to see who's who going to have the best knockout on, uh, on January 7th. <laughs> I mean, you know, this 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 opportunity gives you a, a nice close-up here in, in a co-main event of a pay-per-view. Um, your turn into big-time fights in, 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 in life on pay-per-view isn't so far around the corner. Do you think sort of like – this may be the last time we see you not in the main event. We know why you're not in the main event. It's a great opportunity to be on, but it, this could be the last stop on this journey before you're the featured guy. I feel like I definitely feel like this is a great opportunity for me, and I feel like this this might be the you know uh, the breakout of me being a pay per view superstar, you know, a main event fighter, you know. Uh, yeah, let's get it. You know, it's, it's time to shine. You know, uh, January seventh. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, if Errol Spence goes in the direction of Keith Thurman, like some think he will to open this calendar year, how do you see that fight playing out? Uh, that's a good fight, but I think uh, Errol Spence is going to stop um, Keith Thurman, like 10 or 11. I mean, do you think, when it comes to somebody that's going to step up and really challenge you, like you said, you may go all the way to the world title. You may go all the way to the end without ever losing. We, you know, it's rare, but we have seen it happen. Is it, do you look at right now at the landscape and say, okay, Spence, Crawford, all timers there, they're, they might give me trouble, but is there anybody else? I don't think nobody will give me trouble. 
you know, I, I feel like when I'm when I'm at my best, I feel like can nobody touch me, and I'm going to continue to keep winning, keep dominating. I'm not, I'm the best at this weight class, and I'm the best in the world. How would you say your style came together? Is there is there a foundation or 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 a pattern that you modeled after somebody else, but added your own sort of ways to it? Because you do tend to do things at times flashier, but definitely structurally different than the typical orthodox boxer. You're switching stances, you're flowing. How how did you become Boots Ennis? Uh, I became Boots Ennis through my dad. You know, uh, my dad was a professional boxer, and then he, both of my brothers were professional boxer. Derek Poo Ennis and Friday Quiet Storm. I feel like my style is a mix, mixture of all of them in one. Um, my brother was, Pooh was fast. Farah was, uh, Pooh was fast and slick. My brother, uh, Farah was, you know, powerful. He was slick too. My dad, powerful, fast, you know, just everything. Like, and I'm just everything in one. Defense, speed, power, everything. And I, they just made this monster. And and I, I watched uh, Roy Jones coming up, Floyd and Purnell, a lot of them, so. So I'm probably a mixture of all that and one. <laughs> I like that. That's that's some good company to sort of look. And I could see some of those Roy Jones feels at times, but also I can see you identifying your own path in your own unique way. And it's it's got us fired up, so we can't wait to see. So like I mentioned, it goes down. Come in event January 7th, Showtime pay-per-view from Washington. Interim IBF championship at Walterweight. Karen Chakadzian in your way. Boots, it's been great to catch up with you. Uh, the only other thing I'm, I'm thinking right now is is we just saw a new way last week. We got Spencer Crawford. Canelo's still around. Who right now to you is the number one pound for pound? It may be you one day. It may be Shakur Stevenson one day. Boxing is so much great young talent at the moment. But who's in the best in the world right now uh, outside of yourself uh, in your personal top ten? Me. <laughs> uh, outside of me, uh, I don't know. It's a lot of, a lot of top guys. Um, I don't know. I mean, you can. I don't know. You got you got Canelo. You got Bevo. You got better be off. You got Charlos. You got Shakur. You got Scooter. Uh, Spence, but I mean, it's it's too many. I don't know who number one right now. All right, number one through ten. It all comes up. Boots on us on your top ten, and I can respect that. Boots, great <laughs> chatting with you. Go get them on January seventh. Should be a fun night. All right, thank. Appreciate it.